In this video, we're going to get started with SvelteKit 1.0. So first, let's go ahead and create our project. So we'll go ahead and go to our terminal. All right, let's go ahead and use npm create to create our Svelte app. And we're going to use the latest version. So the latest version should be something like 1.0.1 currently. Uh, but if we do this, then it'll actually not work correctly. We do need to use latest. Just know that if SvelteKit 2.0 is released, then some things may have changed. All right, so we'll hit enter and it'll ask to where should we create the project? So we're going to want to put it in JS Pokedex uh, SvelteKit. All right, and now it asks, do we want a demo app, the skeleton project, or skeleton project for a library. If you were just exploring on your own, then the demo app may be the best because you'll get to see quite a bit of SvelteKit being used. However, we're going to use the skeleton product so that we can create our own code easily. All right, so we're going to use TypeScript and we're going to go ahead and say no for yes, lint and prettier and the testing. You can, of course, make different choices if you like and still follow along pretty well. All right, so we're going to go into our project folder and run yarn install. When it's done, we will go ahead and run this command to open up a Git repository. And I'll put a link to my Git repository in the show notes so that you can see this at every stage. And then we're going to type yarn dev, and that's going to start our server. And we have localhost 5173. All right, so we have that open, and this is our hello world. And so we've got SvelteKit working. Now let's take a look at some of our starter code so we can see the very basics of SvelteKit. So let's go ahead and add some exclamation points here, and you'll see they are reflected over here. So it uses hot module reloading in order to automatically reflect your changes. And here we have a plus page .svelte file, and we'll show you what these file names mean in a later lesson. But for now, notice that it's just HTML, and you can keep it as just HTML. Or you could do things like add CSS in a style tag, and boom, now it applies it here. And interestingly, it only applies it within this file. So you could have this h1 here and have an h1 somewhere else that is not read, even though there is no further specification that you put here. So that's pretty cool. And in addition to styles, you can also add in JavaScript. And you can do as plain old JavaScript, or you can make it TypeScript. And so here uh, we can see const hello equals svelte friends. And like in TypeScript, it can be just like that, or you can specify it as string. And if you don't specify TypeScript and you try to do that, then your browser, your uh, editor is going to complain. All right. And so we've assigned this value to hello, and we can use this in our template. And so the interaction between the template and the JavaScript, so HTML with superpowers basically, then this is something that we're going to explore as we talk more about Svelte components. So it's super nice to have your JavaScript, HTML, and your CSS all in one file. But of course, you're going to want to use other files as well. Let's go ahead and put hello in a different file. And here we'll put it, we can put it in the routes folder still, we'll call it hello.ts. And here we will export the hello. And then in our route, we will import it. And we hit enter to auto import. Svelte is smart enough to know where stuff is stored a lot of the times. And now we're accessing the variable from, that's defined here, in here. In the next video, we're going to show how to move beyond simple variables like this and go through objects and arrays and display those in the template.